Hi everyone, I'm Rincy and this is Rincy Reads. It is the final day of Vlogmas and I am here with my favorite books of 2017. So a couple of things before I jump into the list. One is that these are my favorite books that I read this year. They're not necessarily all new releases, although a significant portion of them are. And then the second thing is that I have done full book reviews on a lot of these books. So if I have a full book review for it, it will be linked down in the description and I'm not going to spend as much time in this video talking about it because I have some 17 books to go over so I don't want this to be an hour-long video but again if you are interested in more information on those books then you can always check out those book reviews. I'm going to be going through these books in the order that I read them throughout the year. I don't rank my books anymore because it's too hard. <laughs> It's just too hard to rank books at this point. There's always like one or two standouts from every year and those are always my five star reads and I will definitely point that out when I get to that book. But if you've been watching my reviews or my wrap ups for a while now you probably already know what that one is. But yeah otherwise these are just 17 books from this year that really stood out to me. I just happened to end up with 17 but the 17 in 2017 works out quite well. So the first book on my list is Exit West by Mohsen Hamid. This one feels like slightly of a controversial opinion at this point because there have been a lot of people who really love this book and there are a lot of people who really hated this book. So I feel like you should read this book just to see sort of where you land on it. Uh, this is one that I have a full review for so I will not get into the entirety of it but I will say that this book follows these two characters Nadia and Saeed who live in this sort of unnamed country that is going through like political turmoil and they end up becoming refugees in other countries. There is levels of magical realism in here and if you haven't read Mohsen Hamid before he plays a lot with storytelling techniques and he plays a lot with readers expectations which is one of the reasons why I enjoy reading his stuff so much. It requires you to use your imagination a little bit more to fill in the blanks a little bit more. It's a relatively short book so it really shouldn't take you very long to get through it. Personally I think that Mohsen Hamid is a really fantastic beautiful writer and he explores different ideas and characters and this book has definitely been regarded as a great look at the refugee crisis and what it's actually like for these people to have to leave their home countries while you know their countries are falling apart to leave their family and friends behind and also what it's like for them when they get to these other countries and how little that they have and you know how they're treated and the things that they can and can't expect. This book is really I think unexpected. It doesn't go where you think it's going to go and I just found it to be completely completely moving and it's yeah again just one of my favorites of the year. Next on my list is The Hate You Give by Angie Thomas. This is a young adult contemporary book. I'm sure you guys are all aware of it. It's hyped not only here on booktube uh, but it's on the bestseller list. It's been on the New York Times bestseller list for like 42 weeks or something like that which is currently the record for the longest a book has been on the young adult bestseller list and obviously I think that it completely deserves that. Again I have a full review of this one so I'm not going to go into it super deep and detailed here but I found it to be just so poignant and so perfect for this period of time that we're living in. But even beyond that it has like these really deep rich characters that you don't often find in young adult stories. I think that it's exploring a complex topic in a way that is approachable no matter what your sort of like experience or knowledge with the Black Lives Matter movement is. I think that it does a really good job of showing how different people have been approaching these sort of protests and these police shootings and what it's like for Black people in these neighborhoods who feel completely helpless and feel like there's no hope for them at the hands of these police officers. And it shows the complexities that black people have to deal with when they are, you know, surrounded by white people who don't understand what's been going on and things like that. Angie Thomas poured like her heart and soul into this book and it's very, very obvious. And if there's a reason why it's a bestseller and there's a reason why it's being recommended by everyone. It's a really, really fantastic young adult book. I think that even if you're someone who doesn't typically read young adult, this one is worth picking up. Yeah, it's really, really beautiful. The next one that I have is All Grown Up by Jamie Attenberg. And this is another one that I have a full review for. The reason why I love this book so much is because it feels so real and so honest and so true. In this story you are following this woman who is in her 40s and she's never been married, she's never had kids or anything along those lines. There's people in her life who feel like she's never really completely grown up because she's never been married or had kids or like settled down or anything like that and it just explores what it's like to be a 
40 year old single woman in the United States today. There's a lot of just really honest discussions in here about dating and relationships, not even just like dating relationships, like romantic relationships, but even like relationships with your friends and family and how that changes over time and how it changes when like everyone in your life is married with kids and you are still not or and you don't plan on it. The main character in here is definitely complicated and a lot of people probably won't like her but I found that her blunt it's she's not blunt but she's just completely vulnerable completely open with her life with her situation it's another one that's on the shorter side and I just found it to be it felt like Jamie Edinburgh was like inside my head part of the time too and just speaking truths about like what it's like to be like the single one. Next up I have Fever Dream by Samantha Schwablin and this one was translated from Spanish by Megan McDowell. This book was so like crazy and twisted. It's basically like a horror novella. Again it's on the shorter side. This is definitely a book I would recommend reading completely in one sitting if you have the opportunity. In this story you are following these two characters there's this woman named Amanda who wakes up lying in a hospital bed and next to her is this young boy named David but he is not her son and so this whole story is about Amanda sort of figuring out how exactly she ended up in the hospital and what happened to her young daughter. This book is really really surreal. It feels like you're in a fever dream while you're reading this book which is such a interesting thing to experience while reading a book like I felt like it was such a unique experience that I'd never had before. The way that Samantha Schweblin writes this book it really like messes with your head about what's real and what's not. There's this like constant tension and pressure that like builds throughout this entire story as you try to figure out what exactly happens and like as the story unfolds you start to really question things and it's just amazing. Like it's so, so well done. It's a complete trip. Um, I can, again, imagine that some people aren't going to like this one because it's not like a super straightforward story, but it's really just amazing the way that Samantha Schweblin and Megan McDowell are able to really get and mess with your head. And again, I highly recommend reading this one all in one sitting if you have the opportunity. I think that if you break it up, it'll really ruin the atmosphere of this book, which I think is, again, the strongest part of this book. The world that it pulls you into. You need to read the whole thing straight through and don't leave it until it's done. Next up I have One Day We'll All Be Dead and None of This Will Matter by Sachi Cole. This is an essay collection and it's a humorous essay collection. Sachi Cole writes for BuzzFeed and so she has a very smart modern take on what it's like to be a second generation Indian in North America. She lives in Canada or she grew up in Canada. But yeah, this book spoke to me on so many levels. Um, I did a full review View, not a review. I did a discussion based around this book. She talks about a whole bunch of things including like growing up with immigrant parents in Canada and what that experience was like and she talks very honestly about how she tried to separate herself from Indian culture so much and how she like regrets it now. Um, she talks about her experiences with dating and the fact that she's dating someone who isn't Indian and how that has like impacted her relationship with her parents. There are parts in here that made me cry because again it's so honest and so real and so true to like my experience as well so obviously like that's a personal reason why I loved it so much but I also think that Sachi Cole is really funny and really has great observations about the world that we live in. She talks about things like being a woman in this modern world as well and things like that and I feel like if you're someone who likes humorous essay collections this is definitely one worth picking up. I think she's so smart um, and so talented and she tells really really great stories. She does a great job of exploring the complexities of being the child of an immigrant here in this modern world and like the fractured sense of identity that you can really get. So if that is something that uh, resonates with you, I definitely recommend picking up this essay collection. Next I have Magpie Murders by Anthony Horowitz. This is a mystery book and this book was so delightful, so much fun. I highly recommend it. I have a full review of this one. But this is basically like an homage to the golden era detective type stories. If you are someone who likes Agatha Christie novels then you should definitely be picking this one up. You follow this book editor who gets the latest manuscript from this author who is basically writes like a Perot type 
mystery detective series. So you get to read like that full book as well as the mystery surrounding the editor. So you basically get like two mysteries in one with this book. But it's really amazing how well Anthony Horowitz is able to write a mystery that feels like it belongs to this specific era and also write the sort of more modern mystery that surrounds the editor. So yeah, again, if you are an Agatha Christie fan, this should definitely be on your list. I think I've recommended this to multiple people and they've all just found it to be so much fun. Next up, I have American War by Omar al Akkad. Man, this book was so emotional and made me think so much. I have a full review of this one, so again, that will be linked down below. But this book takes place in the year 2074, so it's like a near future story. And it talks about things like the complexities of war and the Im impacts that war have on the individuals and the way that you know everyone sort of views themselves as the hero of the story but how even though you view yourself as the hero you might not necessarily be seen as the hero in terms of history. I found it to be really really fascinating because the way that the main character is portrayed in the story to the reader and the way that they're seen by everyone else in the story is really at odds with each other sometimes and I found it to be just completely fascinating, a great character study. Omar al Akkad does an amazing job of exploring just the way that war and sort of the side effects and the casualties of war can impact individuals into making choices that they might not have otherwise and that might not necessarily seem like the choice of the good person, uh, but when you see sort of why they ended up where they are, you can understand completely like why they ended up making those choices. Oh man, this book made me think so, so much and I still think about it. Next I have The Lone Ranger and Tanto Fistfight in Heaven by Sherman Alexie. Uh, this is a collection of short stories. It's a pretty well-known collection of short stories by Sherman Alexie and for good reason because it's really fantastic. Sherman Alexie has this way of writing stories that will make you laugh in one paragraph and cry in the next. Sherman Alexi explores what it's like to be a Native American in the United States today, the complexities that come with living under a government that doesn't recognize you, growing up in poverty, the lack of opportunities, the high levels of like alcoholism that is rampant amongst Native American communities and the impacts that all of that has on these people. Sherman Alexi through these stories reveals the difficulties that these people have had to go through and the fact that they still have like hope and laughter and the fact that they use laughter as a way to sort of like cope with the difficulties and things like that is I just found it to be again heartbreaking and heartwarming all at the same time. All right next I have the five star read for me this year. It's my favorite book of the year and it's We Gonna Be Alright No Sun Race and Resegregation by Jeff Chang. This essay collection was everything for me this year. In this book, Jeff Chang explores a number of what seems like disparate topics, but he connects all of them and shows how it reflects how we got to where we are today here in the United States. I have a full review of this one, so I'm going to link that down below. The way that he explores race in the United States today, he really just lays it all out there and shows that like, we are where we are for a specific reason, but he doesn't leave it there. He also ends this collection by being like, we can make a difference and we can change where we are moving forward. And I really appreciated that because I feel like a lot of times when you're looking at the state of our country, it can get really hopeless. And he has hope that we can be better as a country and we can make progress and we can make change. And it requires work and it requires struggles and pushing back, but it can be possible and I really, really appreciated that. So yeah, if you are feeling despondent about our country right now, I highly recommend picking this one up. Next I have Sing Unburied Sing by Jasmine Ward. This one I did a full video on over at the Book Riot channel, so I will link to that for you guys. But this one has been winning like all of the awards. It's been on a bunch of the best of lists of the year and for good reason. Jasmine Ward is a really fantastic writer. This is the third book by hers that I've read. And reading all of her books, or not all of her books, but a number of her books, I've really seen like how she's grown as an author and this is definitely like her best book yet. There are aspects of like magical realism in this book so if that's something you don't enjoy then you're probably not going to enjoy this one quite as much but 
I like that. And so I was fine with it. But I think that this book was so emotional. I got so connected to these characters. There's characters in here who make really, really poor decisions. And I found myself like wanting to yell at them and like just make them do better. Jasmine Ward explores this class of people who are often ignored, which are like poor, rural, black families who are disenfranchised for a number of reasons. She explores sort of like the impacts of their choices. Uh, it's This book was amazing. It's so well done. It's so beautifully written. I highly, highly recommend it. It's probably like top three for me if I'm being completely honest. Next I have Orhan's Inheritance by Aline Ohanisian. Um, I always struggle with that last name. But anyways, I did a full review of this one this month actually. So definitely check that out. This book explores the Armenian genocide that happened in Turkey and it's completely heartbreaking but completely worth reading. Um, if you are a fan of historical fiction, add this one to your list immediately because it's so, so well done. The way that the author is able to explore what it was like for Armenians during this time period. So much of the Armenian genocide is, isn't talked about or explored at all. Government of Turkey doesn't recognize it as a genocide. They say it was just like the impacts of war or the casualties of war. It wasn't an actual genocide, but that obviously wasn't the case. And so it explores a lot of that and about the truths of history and the impact that knowing what really happened versus what you know, is just told is really important and how that affects people. Next, I have a Bluebird Bluebird by Attica Locke. And this is one I feel like I've been talking about a lot, but I realize it's because I've been talking about it a lot on the Red or Dead podcast. I have a link to the podcast down below so you guys can check it out if you're interested. We just did like our favorite books of the year, our favorite mysteries of the year episode. And this is the one that I picked as sort of like my number one pick of the year. In this, you are following this guy named Darren who is a Texas Ranger. From the very beginning, you see that he is not necessarily a 100% good person. You see that he has a drinking problem. Um, he doesn't always follow the rules. So he's informed by someone that he knows that there were two people who were murdered in the small town in Texas. One was a black lawyer and the other one was a white woman. And it wasn't until like the white woman was murdered that the police really started investigating this seriously. So Darren goes into town not telling anyone that he's a Texas Ranger and starts to sort of look into things himself and things unfold from there. Attica Locke is a really fantastic mystery writer. She has really complicated characters in her stories that oh, don't always do the right thing. She's really great at capturing like atmospheres and places. You can really feel the tension in this town and the tension among the white citizens and the black citizens in this small town. And you can tell that there are just years and years of built up history and conflicts in all of these characters. It's so well done and the ending will make you scream. That's all I'm going to say. <laughs> So if you haven't already checked out Attica Lock, I think Bluebird Bluebird is a great place to start. Um, I think the cutting season is still like my one number one from her, but Bluebird Bluebird is really fantastic and it's being adapted into a TV series, so you should definitely pick it up before it does. Next I have Devil in the Grove by Gilbert King. This is a nonfiction book and it follows a case that Thurgood Marshall argued in Groveland, Florida. There were these four black men who were accused of raping this one white woman. And you know from the beginning of the story that they didn't commit this crime. And so the entirety of this book is about what happened during their trials. Like during the first trial, their good Marshall wasn't a part of it. Um, so you see sort of all of the injustices that happen with their arrest and how they were accused. Um, there was a significant like mob mentality happening to just like kill them before they even got to trial. And then they were held in jail for years while these trials were going on. And while like people were trying to prove their innocence, you see how they're mistreated both inside and outside of the courtroom. It's so heartbreaking at times to see how these people were treated and they didn't even commit this crime. There's a lot that happens in this story. There's a lot that happens to these people. I think that Gilbert King does a really great job of writing the story in a way that's completely engaging for the reader. If you're someone who typically doesn't read 
a lot of nonfiction or if you're like intimidated by nonfiction, I think that this is a really good one to pick up because Gilbert King tells a story in such a great way and he really provides you with all of the facts without it becoming like really dry or without you becoming really bogged down by the facts. Yeah, it's really well done. It makes you really upset at the justice system here in the United States. And it shows just the way that the justice system is broken and can be abused and the wrongs that can happen. Like there's this idealism about the justice system that like the guilty will get charged and the innocent will be proven innocent, but that doesn't always happen. And this is like the perfect example of that. Next, I have Rebecca by Daphne du Maurier. This book was so great. This was one where I was worried about reading it because there's so much hype around this book. I've heard so many people here on booktube talk about how much they love it. And so when I originally picked it up, I was slightly concerned that I wasn't going to like it, but I ended up completely loving it. If you are someone who wants something that's slightly more of a slow burn type of story, if you want something gothic, really atmospheric, this is a great book to read around like October or so when it starts getting cold and dark. In this story, you're following this un named narrator who is basically like a companion for this older woman. She ends up meeting this man named Max de Winter and they end up sort of suddenly getting married and she ends up going with him back to his estate named Manderley. But when she gets there she finds out that he was previously married to this woman named Rebecca and Rebecca sort of like haunts the place almost like everywhere that the narrator goes she's reminded of Rebecca or she hears about Rebecca or there's something that like Rebecca has had her hands in. It's so well done. I was completely shocked by a lot of the twists that happen in this story. Again, it is a bit of a slow burn, so it takes a little bit of time for you to really get into the plot and to really get going. But once you get into it, you are in it. All right, next I have Hunger by Roxanne Gay. This is again, up there in terms of like all-time favorites from th for this year. This is an essay collection by Roxanne Gay and I have a full review of this one that I highly recommend watching because I even like read an excerpt from this book. In here, Roxanne Gay explores topics like her struggles with her weight. Trigger warnings though because she does talk openly about her rape and she talks about how that impacts her relationship with her body and food for the rest of her life. One of the things I really like in here is that Roxanne Gay is so vulnerable about her life and her choices and she talks about a lot of things and she admits openly that like she knows that she didn't always make the right decision but she still just presents it honestly and is like but these are the decisions that I did make. All right two more books. Second to last I have Bonfire by Kristen Ritter. This book was a complete surprise for me. I went into it hearing pretty good things about it but I'm always skeptical whenever you know celebrities write books you never know how good they're actually going to be but this one was actually really really well done. In this story you are following this character named Abby Williams who grew up in a small town in Indiana but she ends up leaving. She moves to Chicago becomes like this really great environmental lawyer and then at the beginning of the story she's going back to her hometown to investigate this corporation in town to see if they are like poisoning the water or impacting the health of the people in this town. But as she's doing this investigation a lot of stuff from her past starts to come up and she starts to wonder about this one girl who disappeared and whether or not her disappearance was actually a disappearance or if there's something more going on. This book is completely gripping. I read it in like two days. If you are in the mood for something fast paced, plot driven, if you like something with a lot of twists and turns, this is definitely a great one to pick up. I really hope Kristen Ritter keeps writing more books because this one was really, really just fun and enjoyable and a complete roller coaster of a ride and sometimes you just need really great thrillers to take you to some like really crazy places. And the final book I am going to talk about in this video is Song of Achilles by Madeline Miller. This one I just read a couple of weeks ago and it was amazing. I had heard a lot of people rave about this book and I had a feeling that I could potentially like it but I wasn't completely sure. Um, so this is basically a retelling of the story of Achilles through the eyes of Patroclus who was basically like his companion slash lover. You get to see them from like child through the Trojan War and their relationship is just so beautiful. Like you feel the love and passion and the tension and the heartbreak and 
just everything. Like you feel completely connected to these characters. It's amazing the way that Madeline Miller was able to write such a deep and rich love story. One of the things I will definitely say is that if you are someone who doesn't know a lot about Greek mythology, you'll still really, really enjoy this book. I think Madeline Miller does a really great job of incorporating mythology into this story without requiring the reader to know about it. She basically provides you with everything that you need to know. And if you are someone who does know about Greek mythology, I think that you'll be really delighted by the way that she intertwines the stories into this specific point of view. I loved it so so much that I read it and then I ended up buying a copy within like a week of finishing it. So yeah, highly highly recommend this one. Really just smart, emotional, heart-filled story. Yeah, it's completely worth all of the hype that it had gotten. And she's actually coming out with a new book in 2018, which I found out about recently, and I'm super excited about it. So that's it. Those are my favorite books of 2017. Let me know down below if you have read any of these books and if they were your favorites or not. Or leave a comment down below letting me know what your favorite read from 2017 was. I would love to hear about it. So yeah, that's all I have for now, and thanks for watching.